tennis is a form of war. A violent thing. And in the middle of it all, the absolute center of attention is this. The tennis ball. It lives in a hundred mile an hour world. Contact is extreme, either brutal or feather light. And repeated endlessly. Speed, power, strategy, and fun. The little sphere brings them all together. Two ounces of toughness, felt covered, two and a half inches through. Resilient, durable. It makes tennis happen. For beginner and pro, young and old, impelled by an assortment of clubs, the tennis ball survives, thrives even, in a vicious climate of smashes, lobs, chops, slices, and flubs. And always it prevails. The tennis ball is the embodiment of perfection. Each one, because where it lives, there's no room for the undependable, for variation, for difference, the bad bounce, uneven wear. Dependability has to be total, every time, over and over and over. So how does the ball get that way? How does such utter reliability come to be? When so many are produced, how can each one be so perfect? The answer comes from machines and people and a name, a big one. It all starts at a plant like this one in Phoenix, whistle clean, crisp of design, new, efficient. The Phoenix facility with 100,000 plus square feet under roof is one of four such plants, each, all dedicated to one thing, making the best tennis balls possible as perfect as can be, millions of them. The other plants are at Jeanette, Pennsylvania, Jonesboro, Arkansas, and in Mullingar, Ireland. The tennis ball is many things, natural rubber, synthetic and natural fibers, a half dozen or so chemicals, accelerators, plasticizers, reinforcing pigments, measured and tested as they come in. The recipes are precise and closely kept secrets. Now it starts in a mixer two stories high. It is called a Banbury. For the first time, the ingredients for a tennis ball come together chewed and whirled in 170 pound bites. Temperature, 250 degrees. Five minutes later, it's done, ready for milling. On temperature controlled rollers, the batch is further refined. It must be absolutely and thoroughly homogeneous. Durability and performance start here. Off the mill, the new compound travels untouched to the extruder. The extruder does its thing. Temperature, speed, and pressure. Each is controlled to the nth degree. And here they are. Pellets, still warm, shaped automatically. A chemical bath is the final preparation for molding. The first of three separate curing operations. Each pellet will become half of a tennis ball center. Constant checking assures, guarantees absolute tolerances. Everything must be perfect. Pellets, each identical, are placed in a mold, many at a time. The mold closes, leaving an exact time and preset temperature to do the job. Minutes later, vastly changed, the former pellets emerge as sort of a blanket ready for die cutting to separate the perfect half spheres. Variations in wall thickness, weight, and overall dimensions are infinitesimal.
inline testing is constant and searching. This unique operation buffs the edges of the half balls precisely and carefully applies a natural rubber cement. Each half is ready for mating, ready to be sealed and vulcanized to form the center, the heart of the tennis ball. Another mold different from the first handles the second of the three cures, some on the top, some on the bottom. These molds are pressurized, which enables them to trap air inside the ball centers. That's how the bounce gets in. Approximately one atmosphere, or about 15 pounds per square inch. Again, time, temperature, and pressure do the work. The seam vulcanizes perfectly. Now, for the first time, two halves make a hole. The centers are moved into this unique buffing operation. Mechanically activated, the balls are uniformly roughed up in a device lined with a brace of material. The rough surface means a better bond between center and cover, a vital factor. At this stage, the balls are checked for size. Sizing is visual, electronic, and mechanical, a three-way proposition. Oversize and undersize centers are screened and separated to find use as simple play balls or other activities, not tennis. From another bin, the freshly buffed centers drop into this trough-like conveyor for coating with an adhesive made from natural rubber. Drying in an oven is continuous. Pre-cemented, the balls are ready to have the covers put on. The cover material is a felt made of just the right, the longest wearing mixture of natural and synthetic fibers. Pre-coated on one side with cement. Cutting is automatic, with each cover emerging in a sort of modified dog bone shape. The new covers are stacked in special racks. Stacks of covers are dipped in adhesive to make the edges tacky. These edges become the tennis ball seams. Semi-automatic cover application is handled by these unique machines developed by General. Mechanical hands assure a perfect mating of cover and center. The newly covered balls are put through a third cure in molds like this, which ensure a perfect cover fit and uniform seam and a perfect cover to ball bonding. Next, in drums, the balls are tumbled. Steam is introduced. Mold marks disappear. The flat nap is raised and fluffed. Here, for the first time, complete tennis balls. Yet another inspection. A lineup for printing, which adds something important. The name, pen. A final check, and the balls are inserted in the distinctive can, pen known wherever tennis is played. The cans are now hermetically sealed to assure a fresh, lively ball when play begins. can, by the way, has a patented snap-off top designed to prevent cut fingers. It was introduced by Penn.
electronic magic is used to check each can and each case after the balls and the cartons have been allowed to age for several days. Checking each case, this marvelous device detects pressure loss in any single can and marks its location on the carton for removal. We've said little about quality control. At Phoenix and at the other plants, quality control is more than a program. It is a way of life, foremost and constant. From raw materials analysis and inspection to the production line, to the final product, checking is continuous and thorough. Nothing is overlooked. Neither slipshod nor chance is tolerated. Quality is sought after pursued relentlessly. The goal is perfection, always.